cái dẹp nè à ờ oh. nó làm phì liệu á ồ dạ nó 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 hay hơn á Hey you guys, I am super excited to be sharing with you guys this rare fruit today that I only recently discovered that my friend's parents have been growing this for the past 20 years on their property. I only just found out because they happen to be sort of, I guess at the end of the fruiting season, but I was so glad I got to catch it in time so that we can pick some of these to share with you guys. These are the Lily Pillies. Lily Pilly Berries, native to Southeast Asia and Australia. This is considered an Aboriginal uh, Australian food. These are not really berries, but they're just like a size of a berry. And they've got this really beautiful magenta color, super saturated color, you can see. This is an Aboriginal food native to Australia and Southeast Asia. A lot of Aboriginal Australians they actually call this the medicine berry because it is high in vitamin C. It's just something they eat to prevent or even treat like fevers. These berries can grow in clusters. I bet they look so much like, you know, uh, tr fruit trees from a fairy tale or something. I happened to catch these at the end of the fruiting season. So we were picking these fruits one by one rather than clusters. Lily pillies are also called rye berries and monkey apples. There's probably a lot more other names out there. There's like about 60 different varieties of lily pillies out there. They all have various uh, shapes or s sizes, colors, and slightly different in taste. It's super crazy. There's just so many different types to explore. But the one that I'll be sharing with you guys today is the most common variety that they like growing and using a lot of in culinary. Some people use this as a hedge because they grow super dense with just, you know, it's an evergreen. I asked my friend's dad if they ever shed leaves in the uh, in the cold here in, in zone 10 because our mild winters, tropical or subtropical fruit trees, they would still shed leaves and that's completely normal. However, he said this one actually stays green all year round here. So I found out that this can be grown in tropics, subtropics, they can even be grown in like a zone nine. Uh, you know, it can handle a light frost. So it's a little more cold hardy compared to the rose apple or the jambu. This one, besides having the 60 different varieties of lily pillies, the lily pilly actually belong to the Syzygium genus, which has like around a thousand different kinds. Isn't that crazy? Like the rose apple and the jambus all fall within this genus. Even just the rose apples or the jambus itself have at least 20 plus varieties. Some in white, some in pale green, some in you know pale pink to this closer to this magenta fuchsia pink color, which is the variety that I'm growing. So there's just so many kinds of uh, Syzygium uh, fruits out there and they seem to share this very similar texture which is a very like hydrated kind of like a cottony crunchy crispy a little bit of like a light apple texture kind of a fruit these can be grown as a little bonsai in a container garden or in the ground they can get to about maybe 15 to 20 feet tall if you let it grow out uh, it's got a really deep tap root to grow these, just like most fruit trees, they like a lot of sun. So full sun, part sun, and because these are evergreens, they don't shed leaves in the winter. So it's just a really beautiful green screen. What makes it even better is that they are edible and they got these really pretty flowers. This variety has white flowers looking very similar to the Jambu Rose apples. This one takes a lot of water during the growing season. My friend's dad would put I think like about a whole gallon of water in his 15 gallon container for the jambu and he says the way he grows these are pretty similar to the way you grow uh, jambu rose apples. 
if you don't put enough water, the fruits may drop. And I think that's especially true for the larger fruits like the, the jambus. These ones, the fruits are a lot smaller compared to those, but he still says they like a lot of moisture in the soil. So well-drained soil, feed them with nutrients, but you also want to keep the soil moist. They can handle a light frost. They actually don't shed any leaves in our zone 10 climate in the winter. So it makes a really great, you know, a uh, hedge kind of a plant for privacy all year round. They have them growing along the, the border between their neighbor and it's just growing so densely. These, you know, all their, their branches grow in really wow. densely. The leaves are quite small. It just creates a really nice border. The trunk of this got so big. It was like this large. You can tell these are old trees. They've been there for 20 years in the ground. Uh, one of the trees they have growing right next to the house. And it was literally like, not even like maybe just like a foot away from the house i was actually kind of nervous when i saw the house i thought wouldn't the roots kind of you know mess up things in the construction or the framing of the house and and he said it's been there for like 20 years and it's it's fine <laughs> he did start them from seed at one point and it was extremely difficult to get them growing from seed so i'll be saving these fruits that i'll be trying with you today and uh, hopefully I can get these seeds germinated because uh, I was trying to grow a different variety before and um, the one that has a more of like a, a bluish purple uh, tone to it rather than this magenta one. And uh, the instructions said that it may take a year or around like a year for the seed to germinate. <laughs> well, it was like a year and a half later and I thought I was so excited. I saw something peeking up but it was a weed. So um, I tried it again and um, it still didn't work. There it goes, that was two years. So uh, I hope this one, there would be some that would germinate and I'm sure that I will keep you guys updated on that. When you grow these in the tropics, sometimes you can get multiple harvests in a year. Oh gosh, I wish you would do that here. I mean, this thing just looks like little fruits that come out of a fairy tale story, don't you think? Imagine having this, you know, really well pruned little trees with these clusters of berries hanging around. Oh, I think it's going to be so adorable. Lily pillies are one of the first plants that you can find recorded in the log of Captain James Cook's travels when he was traveling through uh, Pacific Ocean to the Australia. This is actually a very historical native food that um, especially in Australia they seem to use it a lot. One of these trees can produce up to 176 pounds of fruits. Isn't that crazy? I mean these fruits are actually they don't weigh that much. Yeah they don't actually weigh that much. It's hollow inside and it's got one seed in there usually. These, they like turning them into jams. Some say that they actually use it for like a natural, uh, they incorporate this in like a more holistic hairspray because the, of the astringent in this fruit, it helps to kind of like keep the hair more plump. I thought that was really interesting. They use it in alcohol. Uh, make like a syrup to put on top of ice cream and dessert, make it into like a jelly thing and incorporate it into your baked goods. You can find these growing in urban areas in Australia. Some even have them in home gardens, use them as hedge, like I said. The places that these are native to, they sometimes have them for sale seasonally at the local farmer's markets and the smaller mom and pop shops. Some restaurants even use these in Australia. They have these in some urban areas. I don't know how many people actually know that they're edible. Anyhow, these are just something that's more common in the Southern Hemisphere, but for here, for us in, you know, in the US and in the Northern Hemisphere, this is considered a very rare fruit to grow. So it's such an honor. I am so delighted to be sharing this fruit with you guys. So let's talk about how to store these. They dry out really fast once you pick them off the tree, especially in this climate here where our humidity is quite low. These things dry out really fast in the, even in the fridge without uh, having it in a sealed uh, bag like this. So I know that I read 
you can actually store them two to three weeks in the refrigerator unwashed. However, what I find to be helpful is to, well, I wash them to go through and pick out all the bad ones. And then I just keep them in a Ziploc baggie. That way the moisture will stay within. And this one has been in this for almost a week now and it's still looking really fresh. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. So this naturally has pectin. That's why they make jelly and jam with these. Look at this color. I mean, these colors are just super high in anthocyanin. They're about like the size of cranberries and these are considered the larger of all the uh, lily pillies. Mm, it's very tart. <laughs> this is what it looks like. A little more astringent and tart. The flavor is quite good. It's just that it's super tiny. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, let's go ahead and give this a try. Mm. Oh wow, this one, the seed is like bursting open. I hope you guys can see the green tint in there that's just below this layer. This thing I think really wants to be, really wants to come out, guys, look at that. <laughs> the seeds are so pretty, I mean, it's in this color. I bet you can do some really beautiful natural dyes with these. And this is what the inside looks like. It's very much like a jambu. Mm. So the texture has softened a little bit. It was a little more crisp when I had it just fresh picked off the tree. This has been like, I think at least five five days old now but it just has this really light airy texture let me eat another one mm. the texture of this fruit is so similar to a jambu rose apple very crispy very light and airy and watery kind of like um a watermelon when you bite into a watermelon so a but a little more crispy and um it's sweet but it has a little bit of a tart note at the end. Also has like a, a hint of floral, which can remind me a little bit of a rose apple, like a jambu, but with also some sort of herb, like, um, yeah, I can't quite pick out what kind of herb it is, but some say that it has like a clove-like or, or oregano kind of a tone. I would kind of say a little bit of that both in between. I can see how this works well in like a savory dish or even in a dessert because of that, that flavor and a little bit of that, that fragrance is, um, the scent is like in between, you know, like a sweet and a savory type of herb. Look at the deep purpley reddish tone on this, you guys. This is so high in antioxidants, high in vitamin C. And speaking of vitamin C, I actually have an acerilla fruit growing and there's a, quite a few fruits on the tree right now that actually has just dropped. So why don't I take you guys really quickly to show you guys that little short harvest. This is a fruit that is so delicious and um, really great for container gardens too. They're so precious for me because I don't get a whole lot of fruits. Hopefully as the tree matures, it's going to fruit some more for me. Most people in Southeast Asia eat this when they're super green, but I actually found out that the greener they are, the more high the vitamin C is. So I'm sure you still get some other kinds of be antioxidant benefits with the fruit being ripe. However, you do not get as much vitamin C in a ripe acerilla. Anyway, it's super tasty when it's ripe. Here we go. Mm. Oh my gosh, super juicy and fruity. And got some three seeds in here. Mm. 
Look how deep the color is. It's like a, a black plum. Mm. Whoops. <laughs> I can't believe I can find something so rare growing locally. Thank you to my friend's dad who has taken his time to pick these with me. It's been a while since I've gotten this excited about a fruit. So thank you, you guys, for sharing this moment with me. If you guys enjoy this one, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification button. If you're looking for some plants and seeds for your garden, please go check out my website. I will leave that link as well as some other things that I think would be useful for you guys just in the box below. Thank you. I will see you right back here in the next video. Bye.